Welcome to The Squeeze with Tony Pasquazi. I'm Tony Pasquazi. That's Frankie Bacalars. And we're here with junior on the soccer team, Diego Rivera. Uh, Diego had a breakout season last year, led the team in points and goals, I believe. Uh, and, you know, at the beginning of the season, didn't start the games, uh, increasingly got more and more playing time, ended up starting those last three. And then this season, he started every game. So, Diego, thanks for being with us. Uh, how how has that gone? How has the evolution of your playing time kind of uh, progressed from a freshman now to being a, a junior leader? Yeah. First off, I want to say thank you for having me. You know, I've uh, I've been listening to a couple of the interviews, and I'm excited to uh, dive in. So yeah, I mean, it. I honestly, I pretty much started from the bottom. You know, um, tried focusing on you know getting the little things right, and you know showing up to practice, giving my full effort you know, always being a coachable player, just little stuff like that. And, you know, I just started gaining momentum. And, you know, every time the chance I would get in the game, I would just, you know, run my butt off as much as I can. And then, you know, I, I felt like little by little, I was kind of settling into the game a little more. And, you know, that COVID year was, it was, it was quite difficult for all of us. You know, it was a lot of adjusting and moving and, you know, but I was able to set my feet and, you know, I was able to catch some fire towards the end of the season and, um, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. And now I feel like it's 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 kind of a different story now. Now I feel like um, it's just I'm just having so much fun out there now. And, you know, it's just I don't even think about, you know, playing as much as I do. I just go out there and I have fun and I try my best. Yeah. Speaking of fire, um, you know, since I've been a Donnie, Donnie Nadeau's intern, best sports information director in the nation, by the way. Um, I get to be on the sideline for your guys' game, so I kind of noticed a lot more than I've seen in previous. And one thing I noticed from the first home game you guys had was, man, you play with so much fire, like so much passion, dude. Like you're yelling, like you're just you're all over the place. Is like, is that something you had to learn to do? Is there someone who taught you how to play with so much passion, so much fire, or is it just something like, is that just your personality? Is that just what you've been doing since you were little? Yeah, I think it's just a little bit of both, you know, uh, coming from a very strong soccer household, you know, it was something that was, that's always, you know, motivated me. I've always feel like I've had something to prove my, you know, my entire career playing soccer. And, you know, I, I've also picked, picked, you know, a couple tips off of, you know, great leaders that we had, like Robbie Sobzak and Eli and RJ are also amazing captains. So it's a little bit of everything. And, you know, I'm just trying my best to, you know, make the game a lot easier for everyone else that's out there as well. Yeah, you mentioned strong uh, soccer household. What do you mean by that? Yeah, the moment I mean I can't remember, but from the moment I was able to walk, I was I had a soccer ball on my feet. My parents were always driving me to soccer practice. I was, you know, whether it was anywhere, I'd be watching soccer on TV. It was just everywhere in my household, and then you know I was just kind of born into that soccer family, and you know it just started ever since I was, you know, since I could remember. Yeah, and then you went to St. Pat's High School, uh, Shamrocks down there in Chicago, know it well, uh, on Belmont. But you played against Liam Boyle. We kind of talked about it earlier. Did you yeah. ever have any, you know, interactions with him one-on-one? -on -one, or was it just kind of your teams played against each other? Um, I don't remember specifically, but I think I remember being at the, um, you know, we were on the field at the same time. But at the time, I think he was playing maybe center mid, and I was always, like, on the outside. But I'm pretty sure we've, we've maybe collided a couple of times. But, you know, that was always really fun. And seeing him uh, when we were coming in and I saw he was committed also, it was, it was awesome to know somebody, you know, from the same conference as mine. So I wasn't coming in here alone. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's just popping in my head now. A couple of Chicago recruits, you know, we mentioned Liam Boyle. It seems like every broadcast. I don't know why, but we do. Uh, you know, Daniel Sessler, yourself. I'm sure there's a couple more. And then you also have Corbin recruiting from outside of the United States. Uh, three kids from Brazil, two freshmen this year, Wally, of course, and then uh, Christian Lindanger from Norway. So what is Corbin's recruiting philosophy, if maybe you can comment on it? I think Corbin, you know, he he rec he really rec he doesn't just look for great soccer players. He also looks for great individuals, people that are, you know, like I said, coachable, always willing to give everything for, you know, the team, the club, the badge, whatever. And I feel like that's what he looks for. And I think this this year is I think it's all going to come together. Every I feel like every single guy he's recruited is here for a reason. And every guy here would die on the field for any of us. So that's just the culture we've developed so far. So, yeah. Yeah, kind of speaking of that a little bit, so I'm going to ask you something that I'm going to try to ask every athlete we have on the show. So, you know, um, 
Division three athletics. We don't we don't get a lot out of it. You know, we're not getting scholarships. We're basically just getting T-shirts and clout for the most part. So, like, what what brought you to St. Mary's, and what brought, what made you decide to to kind of go the D three route and bring you here to St. Mary's? Yeah, I just I wanted to find a balance where I could get you know a good academic, you know, you know, just experience, and but also being able to play the sport I love. And, you know, when Corbin reached out to me, um, he's like, all right, let's like get you on a visit. And I came and I visited here. I remember I, I was hosted by Luke Pauly and then RJ and Wally and Henry and all those guys. So, yeah, ever since I stepped foot on this campus, I felt like I've belonged here, not only as a soccer player, but as just as, as, as like a human and a, you know, a human being a person. So it's just, it's really, it's just been amazing ever since. And I'm, you know, I'm happy I came here. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely happy to have you. As I mentioned, you were a, a big part of the offense last season. Uh, haven't scored a point yet this year. Of course, only you've only played two games, right? Two games, yeah. um, or maybe three. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so that offense has been much talked about between Frankie and I, also Chris and I on the, the broadcasts. You've got kind of a new look offense with Landon Pendleton in there. Of course, Eli comes back, Churro, uh, yourself, Wally. How is the offense working and is it working right now? Yeah, I feel like we're, we're, we're definitely on the right path right now. We still have a couple of uh, things to figure out before we go into conference play. But, you know, whether it's Land, uh, Landon or Wally up there, um, I feel like they both just make the attack work very well. You know, Landon is more of a one-two type of player where he lays it off one touch, turns and shoot. And Wally's more of that player that's going to, you know, run around and open a lot of space for me and Cheryl as wingers just to come in. But, you know, each player gives their own type of like a style to the attack, but I feel like it all works. And, you know, we have a big uh, challenge coming up at Simpson. So we'll see that in action, hopefully. Yeah, that uh, the crown game got uh, got canceled yesterday. That would have been another good tune up game. Uh, crown hasn't won a game since 2019. Uh, but you do mention that tough game against Simpson. What can you learn from tough non conference games like Dubuque and Simpson? I feel like um, stuff that you know, just like the little things, honestly. Because I feel like uh, soccer is a game about inches and centimeters and milliseconds and seconds. You know, whatever you want to call it. So just doing the little things right is what's going to push us over that, you know, line and get us that that W. So I feel like if we execute the little things right, then we'll be able to come on top for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, directly from non-conference, what's the whole point you're playing? It's conference play. It's trying yeah. to chase that Mayak championship. And we all know the kind of uptick in pressure and, and game and uh, aggressiveness that comes with playing those Mayak schools. Do you think the freshmen that we have seen – have regular playing time do you think they're ready for that more physical play yeah I mean I'm sure I'm sure it'll be quite the, the adjustment for them but I think they'll once they get in the mix they'll, they'll be able to adapt and see you know learn a couple of things from the older guys and I think I think they'll be ready so I'm, I'm excited to see them in their first Mayak game and I'm sure they'll, they'll all do amazing yeah with that like physical play I think with um your non-conference schedule so far like I think you kind of surprised Martin Luther and um, Edgewood with like how, how fizz you guys kind of showed them like how the Mayak plays a little bit, you know, you, you're roughing yeah. around a little bit. And I think they kind of were taken by surprise with that. And not only that, I kind of feel like you guys were just in the second half ready to go right away. You guys were deep. You guys were already running around the field. How, how much do you think that's going to help you come conference play? Just like, you know, maybe the first half didn't go your way like it did in that um, Martin Luther game. But then second half, it was like zero to zero. And you guys just you guys were up one to nothing. But you acted like it was the first half didn't even happen. And you guys just exploded. So how much do you think that'll help you come conference play? I mean, playing let alone with just like pressure on you is already pretty hard. And especially when it's like that high level, that's what I'm talking about. The little things got to be on point. So like the pressing and making sure we're there on their touch is what's going to make a difference in the game. And I feel like we've been doing that pretty well. So, you know, once we get in thrown in the mix with the, with the Gustavuses, the Johns and all that, I think we'll hundred percent be ready for them. You know, like we're, I feel like everywhere on the field, we have just fast, talented, strong, skillful guys. So we're ready for whoever's thrown at us. Yeah. You mentioned the Gustavus and the Johns. Uh, those are definitely going to be the top two teams. I think there's a spot for number three. 
Uh, and a lot of it has to do with goalkeeping play. And those three teams have the top three goalkeepers in the conference. Where do you think this team can finish? Honestly, with the, if everything comes together, I feel like we could definitely push for top four, top five, at least. And that's, you know, that's what we're aiming for. That's what I'm aiming for. That's, you know, what Corbin and Andrew, you know, want us to finish. And I think that's a hundred percent of uh, like, we could, we could do that for sure. Especially, you know, we'll hopefully get a couple upsets for sure. And if we beat the teams we're supposed to beat, then I think we're, we'll be in great position. Yeah. I mean, that sounds all good. Uh, and then one just kind of like critical question that I, it's been bugging me a little bit um, against Dubuque, against Edgewood, again, against Martin Luther, they all had something in common, and that was a slow start in the first half. In non-conference games against maybe lesser opponents, that doesn't really matter. You can come back and, and crush it in the second half. But against Dubuque and against my ex goals, it might not work. Uh, so, you know, I guess, do you agree with me that you came out a little slow? And if so, why? And how can you change that? It's a lot of questions, I know, but... <laughs> For sure. I mean, I definitely agree with you. That's something that, you know, the coaching staff and all the squad has been talking about. We're kind of in this slump where we come out a little flat in the first half. And it was very notable against Dubuque and against Martin Luther and Edward were the same thing. Um, right now, we're, we're right, right now, that's what we're trying to figure out as a team. Like, what can we do to, you know, get out of that slump? And, you know, we've made slight adjustments, like, you know, playing like the music in the locker room, just slightly louder and everybody just kind of like getting together and just, you know, having a good time before, you know, we go on because at the end of the day, we're playing the sport because we love it and we want to have fun, you know, and that comes first. And I think sometimes when when we go into the games, we get a little too caught up on, oh, my, like, you know, like I got to do this. I got to do that. Or, you know, we got to focus on the tactics. Now, nah, you know, sometimes you just got to just focus in, zero in and just, you know, have fun. And I think that's what we're trying to find is the balance between how, you know, tactically, like, um, how do I say focus? We come into the game, but also still trying to have fun. And remember, we're just, you know, we're playing this to have fun. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Diego. This has been great. Uh, I wish you many goals in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It was an amazing experience.